Hi everyone, good evening. You're watching The Money Show on ET now as a part of the channel's Rise with India primetime segment. I'm Ubina Kapasi and uh, here's what we will be discussing today on the show. First up, we'll be talking of course about how to kickstart your new financial year, keeping in mind the right tone and the right connotations um, when it comes to financial planning, making sure that the money mistakes of FY20 are left behind in FY20 and you kickstart FY21 on a brand new and uh, you know correct note we'll also be taking on board your questions and queries that you may be having on mutual funds i'm sure many of you are concerned because you anyways have been backed out of shape and later on the show we'll also be talking about the big banking merger and the plenty of questions that have come up because of the moratorium so much confusion with sbi's faq the indian banks association association's faq as well spelling out different things so what exactly does it mean we will be talking about all of this right here on the money show well let me first bring on board Mrin Agarwal then uh, she is going to be joining us to talk to us about the money lessons that we ensure we implement as we kickstart the new financial year Mrin always a pleasure having you with us on the money show I want to start off by talking to you then about um, the new year resolutions and I say new year because from a financial angle 1st April is the new year. So um, as we enter into a new financial year, our tax, um, our tax year as well gets changed. Um, you know, and, and you know, for businessmen also, it's a new financial year. What um, is the important budget planning, financial planning one should do for the next 12 months? Well, I think in terms of a goal, you know, and given the fact that we are seeing this situation right now, which none of us thought you know at the beginning of march i don't think any of us ever thought that we're going to be in such a situation where the markets are going to fall and you know there is so much of uncertainty all around us so i think you know the first thing that we really need to focus on um is looking at putting financial security into place so um as you said you know i mean you could have been um really uh, easy going with your money and you may not have done investments till now but i think what is really important right now is to take certain steps to ensure financial security for yourself because the future is looking quite uncertain and you really don't know how the whole covid 19 thing is really going to play out True. So um, I think, uh, you know, given that we are in this entire COVID-19 situation, unfortunately, a lot of our viewers may not have kept an emergency buffer in place. Uh, don't you think, I, like, as we step into the new fiscal year and there's so much uncertainty around us, don't you think that should be step one, that you create an emergency buffer? And yes, if yes, uh, for all our viewers who have not done this before, how, sh how much should be emergency cash which should be kept away? Yeah, I think, you know, the first thing that everybody needs to evaluate into their portfolio is a couple of things. Uh, what is your emergency cash? So do you have at least six months of expenses? I just don't think that three months of expenses is enough anymore. And I think that, um, you know, you should have six months of expenses kept aside in an emergency fund. It could be in fixed deposits. It could be in liquid fund. It could be in, um, uh, you know, if you have a lot of gold, it could be that. But I think other than that you also need to have your contingency planning in place which is number one do you have the right amount of life insurance and number two um do you have the right amount of medical insurance apart from what you get from let's say an employer because again with the fact that there's going to be a lot of uncertainty and certainly job losses to come it is very important for you to protect yourself medically and for that you need to ensure that you have the right amount of medical covered externally so that even in case of a job loss, you, you still will not lose your medical cover. So I think contingency planning is the first thing that um, everybody needs to look at. And I think, you know, it's a good time with everybody being at home and certainly having more time on their hands. They actually need to start by looking at, you know, how are their overall finances looking you know, do you have financial documentation in order, for example, or, you know, do you have everything digitally, right? So I think, you know, you start with that, move to contingency planning, and then, of course, uh, look at start evaluating your portfolio. Hmm. 
Okay, all right, understood. You know what? Uh, in fact, uh, we've already started getting uh, questions and queries. Uh, they've already started flowing in, Mrin. So I think um, I'll hand it to our to our viewers, Mrin. They seem to be pretty eager to ask you their questions. Our very first query is coming in from Rehan. He's joining us on the phone line. Hi, Rehan. Good evening. I hope you and your family are staying safe, staying indoors during this coronavirus epidemic. And I'm glad that you've taken this time out to get your finances in order. So tell us, how can we help you today? Good evening, ma'am. Hello. Yeah, good evening, Good evening, Rian. I've been investing in Nippon India small cap fund about 2000 for the past three years, 2000 rupees per month, that is. Along with that, I've been investing in okay. HDFC mid cap opportunities, 5000 rupees per month for the past two years. SBI blue chip, about 7000 rupees okay. per month for the past two years. I have started with HDFC Nifty 50 index fund. 5,000 rupees uh, for okay. the past one year and Mirai Asset Equity Savings Fund about 20,000 rupees per month since the mm. past one year. Since the new financial year is here, I was trying to uh, look into my portfolio okay. and restructure it. I wanted to go ahead with uh, four new funds. I, if you can please suggest me a mm. good Nifty mm. Next 50 index fund, I want to invest 10K per month in it. A good multi cap fund, I wanted to invest 50,000 mm. rupees per month into it. Mm. A mid cap fund for about rupees 5000 per month into it and a small cap fund for rupees okay. 10000 per month into it. So I'll again uh, start with my 40,000 per month investment but I just want to restructure it into one into this good funds. If you can please suggest me any map. Sure. Okay, all right. Uh, well, Rehan, we are here to help you out. And it's a good thing, you know, to annually review your portfolio. Yes, we say it's, you know, investing in equity mutual funds is for the long haul. But, you know, um, it does not mean that you don't keep a tab of what's happening in your mutual funds. Now, Marin, he's got uh, a nice collection, one small cap, one mid cap, one blue chip and one index fund. So he's got one from almost every variety. Maybe a multi cap fund is missing. So that's something that he wants to add on. But, you know, Marin, he wants to add four more funds. So that would make a totality of eight funds. So my question is, firstly, is it a good idea to have eight funds in your portfolio? Secondly, he just has he I think he just has one large cap fund. And, you know, if he'll add this one more, uh, yeah, I think he just has one large cap fund to think of it. And there's, of course, even the Mirai Asset Equity Savings Fund. So what do you think of the split between, you know, the small caps and mid caps as has been uh, done by him right now? And, of course, in the future, since he wants to top up on his SIPs, which is, again, a great idea, how should he do so? Okay, so I think having eight to nine funds in the portfolio is too many funds. And um, ideally, what you need to do is that you need to basically look at the funds that you have and add on to those funds itself now specifically since um he is considering um you know since he doesn't have a multi-cap fund what i would recommend would be to invest in the parak parik long-term equity fund because that also gives him some international exposure and it's a nice multi-cap fund to have in the portfolio um i think you know since he already has a nifty 50 fund going i don't see the need to have another fund plus he's already got a large cap fund so i really don't see the need to have another large cap fund so i would say uh, give your funds time to perform and you know um, this is where I would also like to talk about like the new year when you're actually evaluating your fund performance. You first have to see how your fund has done against the category average. How is it done against the benchmark before you actually take a decision to move into another fund. So I think two years is a very short time frame. Uh, do evaluate the performance of your funds versus the category benchmark. Uh, I'm sorry, versus the category average versus the benchmark. And also, I think, you know, somewhere you also need to see that are you, you know, from an overall asset allocation perspective, are you too skewed to equity funds? I mean, do you think that you need to have some debt funds? So I think these are the things to look at. But in his case, specifically, the Parak Parik fund is what I would recommend from a multi-cap perspective. And I would say that he should just continue on with the rest of the funds. Yes, there has been underperformance probably in some of the funds, but I would say still continue on with these and allocate to these itself. All right, understood. So I hope, uh, Rehan, this answer will help you with your financial planning process for the next financial year. We wish you all the very best. Okay, next up, we have Aman Chopra from Delhi joining us on the phone line. Hi, Aman. Good evening. What's your query? Movina, and good evening, Amrin. Uh, my question is, two questions are there. I have been investing in the mutual funds for the past 
थ्री मंथ्स इट वॉज एटी थाउजेंड के एस आई पी वन इज एक्सेस मल्टी कैप टेन थाउजेंड मेराय फोकस सिक्योरिटी फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड एस बी आई फोकस सिक्योरिटी ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड डी एस पी इक्विटी अपॉर्चुनिटीज टेन थाउजेंड इन्वेस्को स्मॉल कैप टेन थाउजेंड टाटा लार्ज एंड मिड कैप इट्स फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड आई हैव एनॉमस अमाउंट ऑफ पी पी एफ ऑल्सो एंड द पी एफ बाय माई कंपनी नाउ now please tell me that it my portfolio is right or is any changes required and i want to add some also debt profile apart from my pf and pps i have some fds also and please suggest me the debt funds in which there should be no credit risk mm-hmm. at this point of time and no duration risk please suggest me the funds of debt funds Okay, all right, fair enough. Amrin, how would you advise Aman? So I think he has a lot of funds in the portfolio, right? Um, he seems to be having a lot of focused equity funds. So do keep in mind that you know, given the focus, the the focus nature of these funds, you know, these funds could move either way for you. Either they could work for you or they may not work for you. I mean, as long as you are intending to hold these funds for long term, it's okay. But somehow I feel that there are too many funds in the portfolio. um and at some point in time you need to a uh, 3 months is a very short period so i think you know closer to when you are closer to a one year period you need to reevaluate your portfolio to see how it's doing um in terms of uh, what you have in ppf and epf please remain invested in that because even though the ppf rates have been reduced from yesterday they still beat inflation it's still a risk free return so please do not look at moving out from the ppf please remain invested in the ppf and in the epf um in terms of debt funds where you don't want to have any credit risk or duration risk i think you can look at the idfc short term uh, plan uh, you would need to hold it for at least 3 years so i think you could look at idfc short term plan and you could also look at sbi short term plan um these are two good funds that you could look at Hmm. Okay, understood. So that's um, something that's uh, being recommended uh, by Mrin, um, and you know it's something that you should consider, Aman. You know, Mrin, I actually had another question that I would like to talk to you about, and that's with respect to um, you know rejigging your portfolio. Like our first viewer and our first caller had told us that you know since it's the beginning of the financial year, I thought like you know I'll, I'll give my portfolio a look. but you know the point is um when the markets are so bad and you know there are many mutual funds whose nads have gone back to levels of 2014 that means 6 to 7 year of sips have just vanished you could just say that you know nads have been uh, completely got, thrown out of shape is now a good time to sort of um, adjust your portfolio i know i mean ideally that you know you should review your portfolio once a year it could be the beginning of a financial year or the end of the financial year or the beginning of a new year uh, so on and so forth but given these circumstances is now even a good time to sort of give your portfolio relook because you'll be booking such hefty losses but you know i think one of the bigger issues that i have seen is that with most people you know they just tend to invest based on what's in uh, you know what's in trend what's trending currently right so if you see at the beginning of the year people were putting money in international funds there was this huge move towards having uh, large cap funds of course there was a lot of money coming into arbitrage and as you're seeing right now you know the arbitrage opportunities are really of uh, uh, very few at this point in time and i think funds themselves are kind of putting out notes saying not to invest in arbitrage so I do believe that you know why you should certainly do a review of your fund to see what is your asset allocation. So firstly, you know what is your debt and what is your equity allocations. Secondly, you know even the funds that you have invested in, for example, is there a goal that is actually tacked to it? Because many times what happens is that people are driven by the fact that अच्छा international fund is doing well, so let me just put some money out there. But the point is that. if you don't have a goal to it and you don't know how long you can hold this fund then you're going to be constantly very worried about the returns that the fund is generating so i think it's a good time you know to basically check your asset allocation debt equity how are you placed secondly um within the funds is there a goal that you have actually tagged this fund for and then of course you know you just keep reviewing it i don't think it's a good time to take an exit call right now unless and unless a fund has had more than 2 years of 
under performance versus category average i would not recommend exiting the fund at this point in time okay all right uh, so that's of course uh, mrin's advice uh, when you're looking at reviewing your portfolio mrin thanks so much for joining us then and um, you know explaining this whole process of kickstarting the financial year on a positive note for your money Thank you.